Good evening YouTube, it's Hannah from Smalgish here and welcome to this video which is another of my gothic literature review videos. Before I get into it and reveal what I'm going to be talking about today, please remember to like this video, leave me a comment down below and um, please do consider subscribing to my channel because it really really helps. Let's get into today's spooky gothic literature. When you hear the name Bram Stoker, you probably think vampires and Dracula. You might think like the lair of the white worm, but nine times out of ten you're gonna think Dracula. You probably wouldn't necessarily think Bram Stoker and mummies go together, but in fact they do. Today, I'm going to be talking about The Jewel of Seven Stars by Bram Stoker, which is lauded on this edition as the inspiration for today's mummy movies. Um, there is definitely a lot of inspiration for our mummy tales from today in this book, but yeah, this is kind of a lesser known work of Bram Stoker's and I, spoiler alert, really loved it this. So one of my areas of academic interest that I'm kind of rediscovering is mummies, mummy mania and Egypt uh, Egyptology and like Egyptianness in Victorian gothic horror. And I used to love Ancient Egypt. The 1999 mummy film with Brendan Fraser was, and to be honest it still is, one of my absolute favourite films as a child. To the point I say child, I was nine when it came out. Um, I can remember a Spanish trip when I was in year eight, so I was like 12, 13. We were allowed to bring films to watch on the coach and um, I brought The Mummy because I had it on video. Yeah, video. And because it was a 12, we were allowed to watch it and they put it on at night so that if people didn't want to watch it, they could sleep. I annoyed the girl sitting next to me so much because I literally was saying every line along with the film. I don't know it exactly word for word anymore, but I, I can recite a good part of the film. And to be honest, I think my favourite part of it is when they get off the boat, they've just had, you know, the boat attack by the Magi, and Benny goes, Hey O'Connell, looks to me like we've got all the horses. And he replies, Hey Benny, looks to me like you're on the wrong side of the river. Anyway, I digress. I'm not talking about the film now, I'm talking about the book. So yeah. Um, I've kind of recently got back into it and this book was was a really good read. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it took me a little bit of a while to get into, it's a slow burner, but it kind of creeps up on you and once you're in it, you're in it and you just need to read. So let me read you this bit of blurb. Someone has seized the fabled jewel of seven stars from the mummy's grip, and the ancient Egyptian queen Terra has risen from her tomb to take it back at any cost. The thrilling tale of adventure and ritual magic recounts a supernatural struggle in which archaeologists, grave robbers, and anyone else who attempts to possess the jewel meet a mysterious, violent fate. It is about a young lawyer called Malcolm Ross and he kind of finds himself entangled in this mystery surrounding a girl he once had a bit of a you know passing flirtation with called Margaret Trelawney and Margaret Trelawney's father who is a bit of an amateur Egyptologist antiquarian dealer sort of collector um, is mysteriously found bleeding and unconscious in his bedroom which is filled with Egyptian artifacts and Malcolm Ross and uh, Margaret end up embroiled in this mystery surrounding the ancient Queen Terra who was an Egyptian sorceress and she had this fabled jewel of seven stars which as it transpires Mr Trelawney has locked in a safe and she wanted to bring about her own resurrection and the Jewel of Seven Stars plays a key role in that. So as you can imagine um, this is all about um, sort of resurrection and eternity 
and all those kind of things immortality and magic and rituals and in the end they end up they want to basically recreate this ritual um, and Margaret seems to have a strange connection with the mummy now unlike most or as we would see the most mummy tales most mummy stories it doesn't actually have the reincarnated corpse of the mummy the mummy doesn't actually come back to life at any point um it's much more of a sort of haunting spiritual manifestation of the mummy um and sort of the soul i guess of queen terror um there are a few <laughs> instances of attacks by mummified cats though which is all good um Margaret also has a cat of her own that the poor thing is accused of doing all the attacks. Um, it's innocent, but you know. I really like this. As I said, it started off quite slow and it kind of took a couple of chapters for me to really get into it. But once I did get into it, I was hooked. I flew through it. It's fairly easy to read. Bram Stoker has quite an easy style. Once you get used to it, once you remember that it's like a uh, thinder style, so it's like a Victorian uh, style of writing, so it's a bit clunkier than modern writing. Um, I really like Bram Stoker's writing style. There's a lot of controversy about whether or not he actually authored Dracula, but I think you can tell between the two that this is by the same guy that authored Dracula. Um, the ending is, I don't want to say it's unsatisfactory as a, a modern reader because we're, we're used to things being all tied up nicely and you know things brought to a nice conclusion not necessarily happy conclusion but we're, we're used to things being brought to a conclusion the ending is kind of mysterious and ambiguous like um it's not a happy ending but it's definitely an ambiguous one and um, interestingly there is a second ending there is a 1912 ending of this book because audiences didn't like the way this ended so Bram Stoker rewrote the ending and I read the 1912 ending you can find it um, online easily to be downloaded so once you read it if you want to see how it could have ended or the alternate ending um, it's well worth a read um, I will say the alternate ending is really happy and nice and you know happy ending sort of thing um i don't think it fits i think the ending as it is in the book at the moment even though it's kind of ambiguous and a bit like oh I, you're left wanting more i think it much much better suits the novel so yeah um i would definitely definitely recommend finding this and giving it a read there are loads of different versions you can find on um, Amazon you can also find like Kindle versions to download um, but I got this I don't think it was that much money I think it was about five pounds um, and it's a really simple uncomplicated uh, edition so if you can find this edition I would definitely get it um, I love the artwork can you see that the face is really good um, yeah I would really recommend this and if you're a fan of Bram Stoker, if you're a fan of mummy movies, if you're a fan of interesting, kind of at times chilling uh, works of Victorian fiction, I would thoroughly recommend you give this one a go. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you're gonna try The Jewel of the Seven Stars. If, if you even know that Bram Stoker wrote things other than Dracula, let me know down below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on my next one. Goodbye.